So I'm going to be doing a quick retouch tonight on Srini's photo here. Um, first things first, let's start the music. Um, next thing is I have a layer, um, an action setup to duplicate the bottom layer and add a blank layer, um, which is basically what I do every time. Oh no, connect. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go into this patch tool here and I'm going to use the spot healing tool to kind of take out anything that is jumping out at my eye that kind of distracts from the incredible person that I'm working on because the purpose of this photography of the, of the headshots that I do is to showcase, you know, like this person at their best. So I want to help them shine. I want to help take away anything that's just going to take the eyes away from from the person's eyes and expression and smile. So I'm just going through and using just this auto healing tool just to, um, to just kind of clean up a little bit. You see here, just clicking. I'm not sampling anything. I'm just clicking around and I'm letting the Photoshop magician do the calculations for me. Now, Srini here has, um, you know, it's not like perfect flawless skin, so I want to respect that. I mean, that's part of, you know, what makes what makes him who he is. But there are little things I can do, you know, without making him seem really super airbrushed. There are little things I can do to kind of just even things out a little bit, you know. Um, and I press the space bar as I go to um, uh, to move like that. Because I'm funky and fresh. So sometimes this auto healing thing works pretty well, and sometimes it doesn't. So it's just a matter of getting a feel for the tool. So you're just going around, my eye just kind of dances around. You know, anything that is kind of sticking out. So let's look pretty. So, I'm just doing all that's here and there. Um, now, one thing that's bothering me is his hair. So I'm going to press the S key for stamp tool for clone stamp. One thing you'll learn about me is that I do everything in hotkeys. I don't go clicking into the menus because that's a waste of my time. I'm already, I just spend so much time on this stuff that I want to cut as many corners as I can. Not in terms of quality, but just in terms of, you know, how I use the tool. If I can use the tool better, oh, and to undo, I just press Command Z or Control Z if you're on a PC. I started out on a PC, but now I use a Mac. And uh, I think I, I like Macs better, not necessarily because they have more power or anything, they're just cooler to use. I feel cooler. No. I mean, here's a little spot that tells me my legs need to be clean. I'm going to make my brush smaller using the bracket key again, all hotkeys. So, as you can imagine, this can get really super tedious. <laughs> it's not like I've been sitting here already for the past, like, six hours retouching photos. No. No. That's... No, that's true. That's true. I've been sitting here for a while. I've been sitting here for a while, but I just wanted to include you guys at least this one, this one that I do here. Tree is a cool dude. He's a um, he's a fellow photographer, um, and so he wanted to get his headshot. He understands the importance of having a great photo, especially for his uh, photography website. So he came to me. As you see here, they're just little little spots. Uh, so he came to me, understanding that he needed to get a good photo for his website, especially because you know if he's inviting models or or whoever to have their photo taken by him. He needs to make sure that he has a photo on his website that inspires confidence, a photo that inspires trust, a photo that makes people go, oh yeah, this guy looks pretty cool. He's probably not going to kill me, you know, during a photo shoot. So I mean, look at this face. Is that the face of someone who's going to kill you? Probably not. At least I'd like to think it's not. So here I'm using the patch tool again. I'm, I'm staying in this tool, this first preliminary part of my edit. It's all in these tools, and if you want to switch between them, you can just click and hold down. Do you see this letter J here that means that the hotkey is J? So I'm pressing J right now. Look, I'm pressing J and it switches between the keys. That's all I need, you know? So pretty sweet. So let's see what I've done so far. You know, little things, but again, it's the little things that count. You don't want necessarily 
big gigantic changes to show on your work because then you have people going oh wow that photo looks super airbrushed so let's see what we can do about this hair here because that's kind of standing out in a way i don't like let's try again i'm gonna go in for the clone stamp tool i'm gonna make my brush really small as you see here my opacity it's 100 for now i mean i might not always use 100. um here i'm kind of sampling a little more as i go uh, to use a clone stamp, you, you're cloning from essentially one set of pixels onto a new set of pixels, unlike the patch tool, which is more like you're taking the texture. Uh, like here, I just switch between the two. I, I do that. I, I'm sorry if I move too quickly, but... Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, so, you know, just clean it up. Anything that kind of stands out, we want to get rid of it. You know, hair can be pretty tricky. I've had some... Probably more experience cleaning up hair than I would like. Um, and what I can tell you is that it can be tricky and sometimes it takes some maneuvering. So here I just grab a big piece there. And then I fade it, always fading it. If, you're, if your work is looking blurry and looking like it's airbrushed, it probably means you could remedy that by just getting familiar with this fade control, uh, command key. So how, in order to get fade, you can do Command Shift F, or you go up to Edit and you go Fade here. See, it's not highlighted because I have deselected my selection. So now, if I go, say I go here, now you see it's highlighted because you can only you can only uh, use it within after having immediately taken an action. Like if you take an action and then deselect and do something else, you can't you can't fade it. So you have to be prompt. So again, trying to maintain, you know, the integrity of the skin um, and birthmarks. I mean, that was a birthmark, but I'm going to just fade it down a little bit just because it's a little too eye-grabbing. So here, if it's faded, we can't say that it was taken away, right? It's still there. It's just not as prominent and eye-catching. So here are these little um, eyebrow or hairs are kind of distracting. Here, a little trim, you know, just kind of dancing around wherever my eye takes me. I'm going to fade that one because that was like a birthmark. Just a little bit. Fade this guy too. Fading it, fading it. You know, really just really wanting to maintain the integrity of his skin, of the personality of his skin, while also helping him out, you know? Maybe, maybe, uh, you know, if you put on a little bit more sunblock, you know, back in India or whatnot, maybe he, you know, wouldn't have such prominent... Uh, marks. So maybe I'm just going back and I, I am his sunblock. I am the sunblock that he forgot to wear. So let's see where we're at now. So simple, right? Nothing too extravagant. Nothing too fake looking. Nothing too airbrush as they say. You know, people people use that term airbrush and they have no idea what it means. It's just like, and I hate, I hate most of all when I have people like clients, they're like, oh no, no, don't, don't bother retouching it. It's fine the way it is. And it's like, dude, you don't know what I do. And also, I don't release like unairbrushed or unretouched photos. It's just like, if you want an amateur photo, go to an amateur photographer. Or if you want a photo that's not my quality, then don't come to me and then tell me like what you, I don't know. You, you learn a lot. You learn a lot being in business and working with clients and, and uh, <laughs> everyone has to find their own balance. Let's just say, I love this song. This is, I kept my music here so you can see what I'm listening to. This is Alt-J. I love Alt-J. Alt-J and Juno. I'm a huge fan. So here, that was like a bigger patch than I normally do, but here I'm just, I just want to just tidy up that under eye. He got a little, little bit more slick than he thought he did. But again, you always want to fade this because if you just if you just patch up under that eye, well, that might be a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do, oops, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to undo a little bit of what I just did under the eye by doing a mask and just painting it back. I know it's probably kind of complicated. If you don't know what I'm doing, but that's just what I did. So I'm going to smush those changes together. Cool. Awesome. Let's do this guy. Let's do a little bit here. 
here. You know, just, just want to help them out a little bit. I really want to make this image really stand out and really be special. Oh, did I already do that? Yeah. Especially when you're retouching like actors headshots and stuff, you have to be super, super careful to not, um, to not take away like the freckles and the birthmarks and stuff because you know, maybe that's what the casting director is looking for. You know, they that has to be the most true to life as possible. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do this all, all this stuff. Because I mean that's the industry standard. I mean, the industry standard is is you know retouched, but retouched well. I see so many photographers who they only like they're really only providing the photography. They're not providing and I can tell just by looking at the image, I can tell if it's been retouched or not. But I provide the photography and the professional retouching, which is why my images stand out for what they do. Because I put a lot of time and energy into them. You know, I tried to I tried to find someone who, you know, could help me with the retouching who was as good as me. And I just I f like I would have others like help me with my images and then I would still spend like a half an hour to an hour like fixing what they did. So if you know someone as good as me, I would love to meet them and hire them. <laughs> and until that, I guess I have to do it all myself. But that means that I maintain my high quality. Mm, sounds like a good song coming up. I was misled. That is gonna be something else. So real quick, let's do my eye technique. So we go into this layer here, it's a blank light, a blank layer in soft light mode. I'm gonna go to my brushes, um, and as I press X, I toggle between black and white. The function of that, oh, and I just pressed one to go into 10% um, opacity. Oh, see, I'm in white. I don't wanna be in white, I wanna be in black. I just wanna, I wanna fill in the eyebrows just where there's any little bit of, where it's like uneven, you know? That's what I just did. See that? So this is good because it can just bring a little bit more power and focus into the eyes, you know? Because that's what it's all about. It's all about bringing that effect into the eyes. Let's see, we'll zoom out. Cool, right? So let's go into the eyes a little now. What I like to do. A lot of retouchers do something that disgusts me, and that's they'll take the whole eyeball and they'll make, you know, they'll just whiten the whole eyeball, which is awful for a variety of reasons. One, it just looks bad. Two, an eyeball is an is a sphere, and when you just whiten, when you just whiten it uniformly, you flatten it out. You know, um, so I didn't flatten that eyeball, right? I might even just go up, up. Cool, look at that, right? So simple, not crazy, not too dramatic. And I'll double click on this and label it eyes. And then I'll make another one. Uh, let's call this face. So was, I'm using the same technique, same soft light, same brushes, everything. Here I'm going to toggle to black. Um, so let's almost for men's faces here. You know, just adding a little bit. A little bit of definition to the curvature, you know. Here, I just want to um, even out the beard, the stuff, the seasoning. Just to make it really sort of uniform and easy. Just nothing standing out more than anything else. You know, this is like when they record music and they kind of even out even out the sound so that the highs are not too high and the lows aren't too low. That's kind of what I'm doing here. Sweeney's a great guy. He's really cool. I liked him a lot. We had a, we had fun in the studio. And it was it was cool that he as a photographer was coming to have a headshot session with me. But I think he also just kinda of wanna learn, wanted to learn from me and how I do things. And, you know, what better way to learn from a photographer than to hire them? Because um, then you get to see the whole process. Actually, one of the best lessons that I had in my photography career was in hiring another photographer. Um, he had this, like, really great deal that I could not pass up, and I just, I, I liked his work, and so I thought, hey, this is going to be great, you know? 
And he came over and we had the session and frankly, like I felt pretty uncomfortable the whole time. Like he didn't really do anything to make me like feel at ease. Like even though I'm a photographer, I was nervous as hell going into the shoot, you know? Um, you know, it gave me a, a better appreciation for what my clients go through. Like as soon as you, for me, as soon as I scheduled a shoot, I was like, holy crap, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. You know, <laughs> like all the self-doubt comes in, all the self-deprecation comes in. It's really, I mean, getting a photo shoot is a very heavy, at times, like psychological event. You know, you have to face a lot. Okay, look at that. Looking much better, right? Again, small changes. Small changes. Eyes. Face. And look at that. Look at everything face, right? Just even out that fear. Before, after. Before, after. Before, after. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about this one. Let me see. Um, give me this line a little bit. I'm gonna just take off a little bit and fade it. I press Command H to make the little marching ant selection go away, but my selection is still very much there. Let me go see. My selection is still there. I'm just taking it away. See, Command H or Control H to hide extras. That just hides that selection, but it's still there. You know. Um, yeah, this one's this one's gonna be this one's good. This one's fast. I mean, you know, he, this is not like a supermodel picture. It doesn't have to be flawless. You know, it's in, in that way it's easy. Actually, here's something I'll show you. That lip, I don't really like the way that it's sticking out like that, so I'm going to fix it by going Command-Shift-X. I'm going into my liquify. In here, this is how, in magazines, they give girls bigger boobs and, like, <laughs> you know, fuller butts or, or whatever. They, they slim them down, whatever. You see? See what I just did? Cool. So, let's, let's, I'm going to do a snapshot. Let's go here. Let's, this is where I started. This is where I'm at, right? Pretty good. Started, this is where I'm at. Started, this is where I'm at. Okay, the one thing that's sticking out to me now is this little line right here on the lips. So, um, and you see, it's it's a it's just a darkness, you know? Oops, I'm gonna um, okay, this might be a little hard to just just watch. So I made a new layer, color. It's slightly um, like grayish. So what I'm doing now is I sampled a color in 15% um, opacity and I'm painting on a blank layer in the color mode. And I just added, see that? You see that? It's just like, I just added a little bit of color. Yeah. It's, it's almost negligible. You can barely even see it, but that's how much effort I put into these photos. <laughs> So this area here is a little bit for my liking. Cool. So remember, it's also important to zoom out as you work. Um, you don't want to be too zoomed in because then you lose perspective, just like in life. If you're too focused on the small stuff, then you don't, then you miss all the other big stuff going on. Um, Alright, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Over here I see something. So I'm just going to do a patch. And I'm just going to... Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's group these layers and just see what I've done. Yay, sweet. Before, after, before, after. Before, after, before, after. And you see, it's just, it's small changes to help you stand out more. You know, to let the important stuff stand out more. Which is this beautiful expression that he has on his face that inspires likability and trust, you know? I wanna, I wanna give him a photo that like when girls, like when models see it, they go, oh yeah. I would love to have this guy photograph me. He seems like he's really cool and really nice, you know? Better sample. So here I'm just using the pat the pat patch patch tool just to sample texture. And now technically I could I could I could really just stop with this photo. I'm just I'm just making my life more complicated right now by continuing. So that said, I am gonna call it quits a little bit after I do this one.
A lot of times stopping is my greatest challenge. Cool, right? So I'm trying to leave most of his like birthmarks and things like that. I just, just want to smooth it out a little bit. I always want my, my peeps to look like themselves. You know, just like themselves at their very, very best. Their very, very best. Cool. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Um, you know. I feel like this right here on his neck is like almost like a double chin and I just, I just, I don't want him to feel his double chin. Because he doesn't, it's just, you know, it's my, it's, you know, it's my fault, it's my angle, you know. So I, I am going to remedy that just by helping him out a little, this like a fight tool. You know, just because I care, because he's worth it. See that? <laughs> You know what I might even do now is I might just go in there and just grab some of this and just see if I can just let's fade that down. When in doubt, fade it out. That's what I always say. This little stubble here probably would be shaved a little. There we go. What a great guy. Look at him. Doesn't he look just friendly? Don't you just want to sit down and just hear what he has to say about life, like, he's probably just going to say something, like, really insightful and kind and just awesome. It's one thing I love about this job that I get to do, that I'm so blessed to do, is that I just get to meet the coolest people, you know, and they're always different. Everybody has different needs, everybody's coming to me for something different, and, you know, that's awesome. I feel good about it. I mean, I feel good about it. I can hear one of my mentors like screaming at my head, zoom out, zoom out. Um, real quick. I know, see here, this is where it's like, I'm putting in a lot of more time and effort to increase the quality, like a, just a tiny bit. So, I mean, I would be smarter just to like move on with my life right now, but I just, like I said, like if I could have lower quality images, like if I could, if I could stomach having lower quality images, you know, I would be able to get a lot more done. But the truth is, is I can't stomach lower quality images. I can't put out something that's not going to be my best because my clients deserve my best and I deserve my best. You know, nobody, nobody benefits. Nobody benefits when I, when I'm lazy or when I cut corners, like, in terms of quality, you know, I just, I just, I won't have it, which is why it's like, oh, it's past midnight now, and I'm still clicking away on forms, alright, okay, I am gonna, I am just gonna stop now, oh, last thing, this is how I sharpen my photos, actually, I'm sorry, real quick, um, just a little more, I'm just seeing these, like, kind of discolored, not discolored, but they're just, they're like slightly off. So I'm just rotating between that black and white. And J for the patch tool. See that? So my eye just dances around. There are no wrong answers, you know, it just comes with a lot of training, Not by training I mean practice, and you're, if, if you're a narcissist, like I am at times, you can learn a lot just by working on your own photos because you're so insecure to let them go out without retouching that you insist on retouching all of them. I don't do that anymore, um, but like back in 2004-ish, I just like wouldn't let any of my photos go on Facebook and, until I had just like retouched the crap out of them, you know? If you look back at my old photos on Facebook, 
it seemed like she has a weird kind of glow. That's because I was just learning how to retouch. All right, so let's do a snapshot, see where we're at. So this is where we started. This is our first snapshot, and that's what I've improved since then. Yeah, so started, there we are. Started, before, after. Right, so I'm not totally changing him. I'm not making him look like a different person. I'm just augmenting what's there. Now I feel like that, oh yeah, that right, right here, look there. I, I, I shouldn't have taken that away. So here was what I'm gonna do. Is instead of erasing the layer, um, I'm putting a layer mask, and I'm just gonna brush back exactly what I want. There we go. There we go. So it's good we didn't remove that. You see, is there anything else that shouldn't be removed? I'm going to be able to tone this down slightly. So it's still there, it's just not totally like in my face. It's good. Before, after, before, after. I mean, no, before, after, before, after. Okay, okay so um, I'm just going to merge these two together. I get one full layer. Now I'm going to do is to sharpen. What I like to do is I duplicate using Command J. And I go to here, filter. I go to high pass. Oh, see all these, all these like discolorations. You see, that's where I painted on in the in these three layers here. So essentially, what I'm doing here is I'm just looking for where it just first shows up, like the details really start to stick out. So let's say 4.5. It's going to be different for every photo, you know. And then I put that into my favorite soft light. If, if there's one thing you can learn about me, it's that I love the soft light mode and I use it all the time. So you see that the way that it sharpened it. Now here, what I might do is just take the opacity down, just so you can to get more. It won't be less. I mean. Cool. So let's just look at this image real quick. Um, anything stand out? So I like to do this. Just to move it, just so you never confuse. Like if there's stuff on your um, monitor, if you move it around like that, then you can like see things a little bit more natively. So let's go. Final snapshot. This is where we started, this is where I finished. Started, finished, started, finished. And yeah, that's it. That's it for tonight. Hope you like it. I hope uh, Srini enjoys his photo and it looks great on his website. And he get lots of new uh, models and photo shoots lined up. And, they, and those models agreed to work with him because of course they checked out his website. They saw his photo and they said to themselves, you know what, this guy looks like he's not going to murder me. Let's do a photo shoot. <laughs> Alright, over and out. Good night.